In this lecture, we are going to uh, study matrices as linear operators between uh, linear vector spaces. So the word matrix uh, really depends on which field uh, it is um, used in. But when we're dealing with linear algebra or with continuum mechanics or solid mechanics in particular, the matrices are nothing but linear functions between linear vector spaces. So first, let's try to understand what is a linear function. So we're going to start this by giving examples of linear functions between simple vector spaces. So let's give an example. So what is a linear function? Let's give an example, f from r to r, such that for every x in r, let's say f of x is equal to 5x. What you'll notice is the following. For every x and y in r, f of x plus y is equal to 5x plus y, which is 5x plus 5y, which is in fact f of x plus f of y, which is only true for a linear function. Notice that if I had defined f of x in a nonlinear fa fa fashion, f of x is equal to 5x squared, then you will see that f of x plus y is not equal to f of x plus f of y. So this is not linear. Okay, what else? For every real number and for every x in R as well, we have f of this scalar multiplied by x is equal to 5 alpha x, which I can take alpha and multiply it by 5x, which is alpha f of x. Again, this is only true. for a linear function. Now I'm going to complicate things slightly by defining f from r2 to r, which means I'm going to take every vector in r2 And I'm going to define f of x as a number multiplied by the first component plus a number multiplied by the second component. So what did I do? I took the first I took a vector in R2 and I did some linear operations between its components to give me another number that is a real number. So f of x takes a vector and multiplies, takes a two dimensional vector and multiplies its component c linearly to produce a number that belongs to r. So for every two vectors, you'll notice that f of x plus y, and remember x plus y, since these are uh, x and y are uh, two-dimensional vectors, x plus y is equal to the first component plus the first component, and the second component plus the second component, and so 
x plus x1 plus y1 is the first component in the resulting vector x2 plus y2 is the second component in the resulting vector now f of x plus y is equal to 5 multiplied by the first component plus 3 multiplied by the second component which by the nature of the linearity of the operation can be written as follows which happens to be f of x plus f of y and this is only true because the way I define the function makes it a linear function and of course this is true also for every alpha in R and for every x two-dimensional vector you find that f of alpha x is equal to 5 alpha x1 plus 3 alpha x2 which if I take alpha out will be as a common factor will be equal to 5x1 plus 3x2 which is equal to alpha f of x again only true for a linear function I'm going to complicate things even more by defining a linear function from R2 to R2 such that for every x in R2 f of x now f of x f is a mapping from R2 to R2 which means the result has to be a vector as well which means each component of that vector now I need two components in the first component I would like a linear operation so I'm going to take 5x1 for example plus 3x2 and the second component let's put 2x1 2x1 plus let's say 2x2 and again if you do the same you'll notice that for every x and y in R2 f of x plus y will be equal to f of x plus f of y so the resulting vector is equal to uh, the resulting vector of the operation f of x plus y is equal to the resulting vector of f of x plus the resulting vector f of y also for every alpha belong to r and for every x in r2 you'll notice that f of alpha x is equal to alpha f of x now what we are doing here is that I can extract those numbers the 5, the 3, the 2 and the 2 and form a matrix of numbers so f of x I'm going to form a matrix of numbers 5 and 3 and 2 and 2 x1, x2 and if I call the top row which is made out of two numbers if I call it V and if I call the bottom row this vector U then this operation is almost equal to or, or is equivalent to V dot U 
because I take the first component multiplied by the first component plus the second component multiplied by the second component, sorry, v dot x. And in the second, the resulting vector in the second component, I get u dot x. And this matrix of numbers represents the linear function defined above. So basically what I'm trying to show you is that a matrix graphically speaking does the following. If I have two-dimensional vector space and another two-dimensional vector space this vector space has a vector x what m does is it takes x and gives me another vector called mx this vector can be in the same direction or different can be in the same size of x or can be different and we'll show examples later another vector y m takes y and gives you another vector my that can be in the same direction or can be different can be in the same size or could be different also because of the linearity of the operation then the vector x plus y which is made out of x and in addition to y when I apply m to x plus y so m multiplied by this vector it's the same as adding mx to my which forces the following a circle of vectors when I apply any matrix to it will give me will always give me some sort of an ellipse some vectors are going to be shorter some vectors are going to be longer and anything in between will take something in between So in general, a matrix or a, a linear function T from Rn to Rn can be represented by an n by n matrix of real numbers m made out of rows m11 m12 m1 n up to m rho n com 1 and m n n these are n by n real numbers
Now, why is this important? This, why do we need to know all this? Because of the following. By the end of this chapter, we are going to study two special kinds of matrices. Matrices that are responsible for rotation. So if I have an object, and this object rotates in space, then the special kind of matrix that's responsible for this description of motion is called Q, or rotation matrix. And basically, it rotates the vectors of this object by a certain angle to give me their rotated object. Another important, so these are rotation matrices, which we will study by the end of this chapter. Another set is, which are very important, a set of symmetric matrices and symmetric matrices are responsible for stretching an object. If I have a circle then a symmetric matrix will do the following. We'll take one vector and we'll stretch it and we'll take another vector that's perpendicular to the to that vector and maybe shrink it or also stretch it these two have to be the same length And so you get a stretched circle or an ellipse where the blue keeps the same direction but gets stretched and the black and the green keeps its direction but gets stretched or gets or shrinks and this is the function of the symmetric matrices.